Institute's Rivers of Living Water Cathedral, 604 Holland Street in Fremont, Ohio. Thank you for joining us on social media today. We trust the shared word will be a blessing to you. Reverend Shirley Thanishu will now bring us this morning's message. It's been a long time since I've <coughs> preached before. But all I can say is, oh my God, it's good. And I'm telling you, when you have a problem or whatever else you've got in your life, you take it to him and he will answer. Uh, yeah. He's on that throne 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And he said he would never leave you. He would never forsake you. But that if you begin to call upon him, he said he will answer. And he will answer you one way or the other. But I'm going to tell you something. My God is a good God. And he said he would never leave us. He would never forsake us. And I praise him for what he has done. I worked all week and this jewelry typed it out for me. And I want to talk about prayer today. I want to talk about prayer, the power of prayer. And I'm going to tell you something. When you pray, you know you have that authority in the name of Jesus Christ. We don't have it in the name of Mohammed or anybody else or President Trump or anybody else or Biden, but you have that power and that authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said when you begin to call upon him, he said he will answer. You can call me at times on the phone, but I don't always answer that telephone. I sometimes don't even begin to hear it. But I'm going to tell you something. When you begin to know my Lord and my Jesus, you can look at him and you can call on him. His line is never busy. My line is a lot of times it's busy. If it isn't me, it's scary on that phone. And I'm going to tell you, begin to lift up your eyes and look onto the hills from which call, which God said, that is where you get your strength, your anointing, and everything else that you have. But I'm going to, ask, I'm going to say this. I want to read a little bit about uh, Lazarus. So if I don't follow my notes, that's okay for me, okay? I want to read about a little bit about Lazarus here. I can get to it. Do you remember Lazarus was Mary's sister, a brother, I mean. Mary and Martha was her brother, okay? And he had died, and as soon as she heard that Jesus, um, wait a minute. Jesus heard, but he hadn't got there, okay? And now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then, which were with her in the house and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out and followed her, saying, She go forth unto the grave. Wait a minute. Excuse me, because I'm not steady. She went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave. That's better. You got to excuse me, because I'm not steady. Now, Jesus was not yet come into the town but was in that place where Martha met him. 
the Jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out and followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. And how many times have we done that? We've gone to the Lord, and sometimes the other one's passed on. But how many times have you and I gone to the Lord, and we thought that he had not heard us, he had not listened to what we've got to say, but you know what? He hears every word that you say in the night season and the daytime. He listens to everything that you've got to say, and I'm going to tell you something. He knew about Mary. He knew about Martha. He knew all about Lazarus, how he'd been dead for four days. If you read on down through that, and I'm going to tell you something. When he began to come to that grave, he came to that grave where that man was laying. His body was there, but his spirit man was not there with him. He was with the Lord in the heavens. And I'm going to tell you, when he got to that grave, everybody else was crying. Everybody else was weeping. And how many times have you and I have gone to the gone to the Lord Jesus and wept and cried and said, God, why haven't you answered this prayer? Why haven't you raised this one up? How many times and how many prayers have you said unto the Lord Jesus Christ and said unto him, Lord, why haven't you answered? I even done it recently. Why are you waiting for so long? But I'm going to tell you, he said unto Mary and Martha to weep not. Not to cry anymore, but as he came to that grave and I'm down later, Jesus said, take ye away the stone. They, they was in like a cave or in their grave was like in a cave or whatever. And they put a stone upon that their, uh, opening. And you see, Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus saith unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou wouldest see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. That was Lazarus. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stood by, I said, if that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And I'm going to begin to say that to you and each and everybody under the sound of my voice or watches it. I'm going to speak to the people. You come forth like you've never done before. And you know what? God is looking for a people that will begin to speak to this nation, begin to speak to this town, begin to speak to individuals and even to the churches and the congregations. I'm going to begin to say unto you, come forth like you've never done before. America is in the bondage. Our tongues is in the bondage. The people are in the bondage even in the churches. They're not looking on to him, the author and the finisher of your faith and my faith. But I say unto you, come forth because you don't have nothing else but the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got the government, but they rule and they control. But you know what? You can go to my Lord Jesus Christ and he will begin to, he will begin to answer you whatever the problem, the troubles, or the tribulations, or the trials. He will begin to lift you up and he'll take you through. He will lead you and he will take you completely through. And we all walk through trials and tribulations and sicknesses and death. But I'm going to tell you, he won't let you lay in that grave any longer. He's speaking to your God. spirit, man. You've been in that grave long enough. You haven't walked with him for how many years? How many times have you called on to him today? Have you spoke to him and said, good morning, Jesus? What are you doing with your life today? He wants to begin for you to begin to call upon him, even as he said, I'm Lazarus, you come forth. And I'm speaking to the people that's even watching this or whatever. You come forth because God's calling you like you've never been called before. You've had churches, you've got church membership, you've got everything else, but do you know my Jesus? Yeah. Do you know my Lord and my Savior? I'm going to say unto you, you stand up and you come forth like you've never done before because man can't save you. The government ain't going to save you. They cannot bail you out of a sickness. They can't take 
get you out of a hospital bed. They can't do anything else, but when you come to him, honey, he's gonna, when you're laying in that hospital bed, he's going to say unto you, rise up and walk. And I'm speaking to this congregation today or whoever else it is, I'm speaking to you to start to stand up and to begin to walk. And I'm telling you, I'm praying for this house and I pray for other churches as I go into intercessory prayer. And I'm telling you, the Lord's put a burden upon my heart like I've never had in my 82 years. I'm telling you, he's saying, you need to get into prayer. You need to have people to gather together in your own homes. You need to call on him. You want this country changed. You want your home changed. You want your kids saved and brought into the kingdom of God. What are you really doing with it? I'm telling you, pray. If you never prayed before, God says pray. And when you pray, he answers. Hallelujah. And what are you speaking? I'm, I'm just going whatever. What are you speaking? Call those things in Isaiah 53, 5. Call those things that be not as though they are. Speak, speak it. Jesus said, you are, you ask the Father in my name. He paid the price with his life and took the stripes on his back for our healing. Isaiah 53, 5. He said it was, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And I can truly say I don't look like I might not, I might not be healed, but God, I'm healed. I was in, there was a time about a year or so ago, maybe a little longer, I couldn't even walk by myself. I couldn't do anything for myself. My husband took care of me. He bathed me. He dumped us in Julie, not Julie, but Glenda. Glenda. She come out and help. She had to help me, baby. She had to help and do everything. But I can tell you this. My God has raised me up. He's healed me. I don't work it, but I'm going to tell you I've come a hundred miles from what I was a year ago. When I come into this church, I couldn't hardly even go by myself. I had to have help. And I'm telling you, I'm coming up. And I'm coming out of that grave that's had me wrapped up. He's had me tied up. That enemy has. And I said, I'm going forth. And God is done with, done with me. I don't know what the rest of my work's doing. What I'm doing, I've got people coming to the house. And we have intercessory prayer. And a couple of them is right over here that comes to our house. And we have intercessory prayer together. No gossip, no talking, but intercessory prayer. We take the names down, whatever else. And then we all go into intercessory prayer. And if you don't have a prayer group in your house, you make one. You get, if you only can get one person, if you're a woman, get another woman. If you're a man, get another man. And you start doing intercessory prayer. You want this church to grow. You want this town to be uh, saved and brought into the kingdom of God. You want the drugs off the street. You want the heroin gone out of this town. Then you need to begin to go into intercessory prayer like you've never done before. We've got a country, but we don't have a body that is doing the intercessory prayer like they need to be doing. And that is one of the gifts that God sent into this church. Amen. Whose name do you talk, talk to? In the name of Jesus. Although Jesus performed two earlier resurrections like Lazarus, there was two he'd done before that. And no one could question Lazarus' death since he was dead for four days and was buried. Lazarus stunk. There wasn't no life in him for ten days. And I'm going to tell you, there's some of your friends and some of my friends, some of your family, your brothers, sisters, kids, or whatever. You know what? They've been, they're dead. They're dead. Who in your family is dead? I'm spirit, speaking, spiritually speaking. And if they don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior, they're dead spiritually. And I'm going to tell you something. When you begin to get into prayer, He's going to begin to put a burden upon your heart. And I pray it, if you that are in here today don't have that, I'm praying, God, you give it to them, pour, pour it out, give it on to them, that they will begin to have such a burden they can't 
fight it, they can't shake it, they can't sleep or anything else. I'm praying because if there's only one and two here today that will begin to do it, you're going to begin to see the signs. You're going to begin to see the miracles and the wonders we haven't seen in years. I've seen them years ago when I was a teenager, and my mom and dad got us into Pentecostal through Jimmy Martin. And I'm telling you, we begin to see the deaf ears. We begin to see the blind to begin to see. And Pam, my daughter, might even remember some of it as I drunk the kids, all six of my kids along with me. And I'm telling you, we begin to see the lame begin to walk. We begin to see the deaf begin to hear. And I'm telling you, it's going to come back into the body of Christ because as we gather together as one family, one unit, he said, when you begin to call upon him, what did he say? What did Jesus say? You call unto me and I will do what? He said, he will answer. Whatever your problem is, whatever your situation is in your life, if you begin to call on him, he's going to answer you, and he's not going to give you a busy signal and say, well, I don't have time for you. Your family might not have time for you. The church might not have time for you. The, priest, the bishop or anybody else might be busy, but I'm going to tell you, you go to him. You go to the Lord Jesus Christ, and he doesn't give you a busy signal. You get one of my hostas, and you either need or Gary is on that phone a lot. And I'm going to tell you something. You go to him and you're not going to get a busy signal, but you're going to get a miracle. You're going to get a healing and God's going to raise up somebody because what? You prayed. Yeah. You prayed. Yeah. Not your mom, your brother, or sister, somebody you call, but you prayed. And this is what's wrong with the house of God and with the body of Christ. There's no prayer, hardly any prayer going forth. And God says, you go to prayer. You begin to seek my face. He said, when you begin to seek my face and call upon me, he said, he will answer. Who are you seeking and what are you seeking? I'm asking you to examine your heart today. Who are you seeking and what are you seeking? What is your real purpose in this life? I know what God called me to do. I might be old and over the hill, but I'm telling you I'm going to fight to the last breath in my body. And if I can't get him someplace, I'll get him someplace else. And you know what? I don't have no problems teaching because I've got people calling and saying, will you begin to teach me? I've got the Catholics, I've got this one, and I've got that one coming to the house, and I've been teaching them for over two years, and they're hungry. The people are hungry. Are you hungry enough to feed somebody else? Have you had enough of this word? Have you been reading your Bible? Have you been seeking him? Are you filled enough that you can call your brothers or your sisters and say, come on over, let's have a prayer meeting? And before we were saved, we were dead in our sins and trespasses. This is the reason he has come to redeem us from Adam and Eve, what they did in the garden. What was it? They disobeyed. And sometimes I'm disobeying at times when God says, uh, 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 just put the phone down, put this down, put the Bible down. You get on your hands and knees and pray. I can't get on my hands and knees anymore. But you know what? I can sit in that chair and it's an old one. I can sit in my family room, and I sit there, and Gary will tell you, I sit there and cry, and I pray in tongues. I can sometimes even pray in English. I pray in tongues, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and that's another gift that God have gave unto the body, so they can pray a perfect prayer. And I'll begin to pray in tongues, and I'll weep, and I'll sob, and I'll cry. God has put a burden in my heart for this house. And I lift this house up to him almost every day. And God, I said, I want to see a revival here. I want to see the anointing to begin to fall. I want to see the Holy Spirit begin to slave in the spirit where they were laying for an hour like they used to do. We see in, in Africa, it was there four times. Maybe twice. I see the miracles. I see the signs and the wonders, and I say, and God, bring it back to this house. Bring it back to America, not just this house, but the other ones in this territory. I don't know about you, but my Jesus is good. Yeah. 
In the Bible, I'm going I'm to read a few notes as well. There's a physical death. There's three different deaths, okay? The first one is the physical death, which means separating, separation of the body and the spirit, okay? Number two is the spirit. That's a physical death. Number two is a spiritual death. That's the separation of the individual from God. That is one that has not accepted him as their personal savior and Lord, because there's three. Number three is eternal death. That's the final death. The final, eternal death, the, the final, let's see, look, you can't see the bell. The final death, final state of the lost person in the lake of fire. And for those that does not accept him at all, rejects up to the last breath, and even to the last breath, that's where the remain of the fat. But I'm telling you, he's made a way where there was never a way. He's provided everything that you have a need of. I don't care what your need is. It might be physical, it might be spiritual, you might need another refilling of that sweet Holy Ghost, and I'm telling you, you should be filled every day with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And if you're not speaking in tongues every day, honey, you need to start speaking in tongues. You need to pray until that Holy Spirit begins to move upon you. And when he begins to move upon you, you're going to start speaking things you never thought you could ever speak before. You're going to begin to see the signs and wonders and the miracles like you've never seen before. He's going to begin to stand up in the body of Christ. His church is going to begin to stand up. And I'm praying, let us take America away from the enemy. Let us take him away from the Democrats in there and the Republicans. We need Jesus as the head of our government. We need him in our leadership. You need to pray for that man that was put into that leadership or over this country. I'm telling you, if you don't have anybody else to pray, you start praying for that man's salvation. He's a Democrat, but I'm not going to say the way on that. But I'm going to tell you, he needs my Jesus. He needs your Jesus. And he said, in the Bible it says, Jesus told us to pray for our leaders that is over us. They are a leader that is over this government. They can close the churches. They can do anything you want to. But I'm telling you, when you get on your hands and knees and begin to call him, call on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to see the government begin to change like it's never changed before. But it's going to take people to stand up. It's going to take the body of Christ to stand up and take their place in the kingdom of God and begin to pray like they've never prayed before. Amen. In Genesis, after he created Adam and Eve, and the woman was created, God said in Genesis 131, it was exceedingly good. God's plan was not complete without the woman. And some people say, well, we don't need the woman. Sorry, God made, her, made us for a purpose. He made us for a purpose. Emphasis being on alone. Help is used frequently in the Psalms of 1014 and some other ones, and I didn't write them all out. Jeremiah, fourth, the first chapter. Wait till I get up. Jeremiah, first chapter. And the body and the church is even called like Jeremiah was called. And God gave this to me in a dream. Jeremiah, first chapter, start with fourth, fourth verse. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee before thou camest forth out of the womb. I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, ask, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. And God gave this, this to me in a dream, this whole, almost the whole first chapter. And I argued with him when I was young. I was a teenager, and I had a dream. And I see an elderly lady, Jewish lady, in the dream, on a, in this picture like and underneath it said, Jeremiah, the first chapter. 
And under that, it said in that dream, and I will never forget it. He said, speak the word. And I'm telling you, he's doing it today. He's doing it today. And I told God, even if, after I had that dream, and I told him that I dreamed some of today, God, I don't know if I can do this. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. And he's not only was speaking to me or Jeremiah, but I'm going to tell you, church, he's speaking to you. He's calling you to stand up. And if you ain't going to do anything else, you stand up for the kingdom of God and for his testimony that he is alive and you're alive because he is alive. And I'm telling you, he said, be not afraid of their faces for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. And I said to Gary before, and he'll tell you, I said, Gary, you got to pray for me, honey, because I don't know if I can do this or not. But you know what? I have to come back to the word of God. But he told me to speak the word. And if I can't speak anything else, I'm going to give you the Lord. I'm going to speak the word of God. And anybody that comes in our house, honey, we end up preaching to them or testifying to them or laying hands on them. And I'm telling you, that's what God is looking for in the house of God. Not only in the house of God, but in your houses, in your homes. You've got people coming over saying, let's have a prayer. If you ain't got nothing else that you can do, you give them Jesus. When you ain't got the food to give them, give them Jesus. Amen. He said, be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. And I was talking to Gary this morning about this one. Then said the Lord, put forth his hand and touch my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, and to throw, throw down, to build, and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. I'm telling you, God's got his tree. His everlasting life, he's got it here and telling you he's going to begin to call you like you've never been called before. I know I gave her notes about that. Okay. In Genesis, after he created, created Adam and the woman was created, God said in, in 131, it was exceedingly good. God's plan was not complete without the woman. Emphasis being on alone. Help is used frequently. If you go back in Psalms 10:14, you can write, write the addresses down 22, 11, 28, 7, and 40, verse 46 in Psalms. The verb, the verb form basically means to aid or supply that which the individual cannot provide for himself. In that form, when God said he was forming men, we can't provide salvation for ourselves. You can't do nothing for yourself. It's only Jesus Christ that's going to do it. You might want to help somebody else, fine. But you cannot do it without the Lord Jesus Christ in Amen. your life. And, yeah, I read that. Body church is even called as Jeremiah was called. I want you to go to Ezekiel 37th chapter. Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. And this is the belly of dry bones. And I'm going to tell you something. America is a belly of dry bones. This country is full of dry bones. 
and I'm talking into the leadership, I'm talking into the into the uh, the fivefold ministry. When you go visit another church, let me know when you find one that you see the signs of wonders and the and the miracles begin to happen. When you begin to see that happen in the house of God, you found you found something. You really found something. I want to read part of. Um, oh, it's not late. Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. And this is what Ezekiel seen. He said, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the belly, midst of the belly, which was full of bones. And I'm going to tell you something. Church, we're sitting in the belly of, uh, full of dry bones. You might say, Well, I don't see any honey bear out there. We've got them all over this country. Belly of dry bones. There's no meat on them, no sinew on them, no muscles, no nothing, no breath, no life in them. They're walking around, but they're dead. And I'm going to tell you that's what prayer is going to, going to have to happen. Is when you begin to go into intercessory prayer, you begin to go and enter into the courts of the Lord Jesus Christ, first of all, before you start begging and asking. You begin to get along with him, and you begin to thank him, and you begin to praise him, and get into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ Almighty, and as you begin to lift him up with your voice, and you begin to talk to him, and you begin to praise him, he's going to put that anointing upon you, and when that begins to hit, you're going to know something's going to happen. And even as Ezekiel began to call and begin to speak, and he said, the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he carried me me out in the spirit of the Lord and you know what's going to happen when you begin to pray. God's Holy Spirit's going to get a hold of you and he's going to carry you into that land of promise of the Holy Spirit into the miracles and signs and the wonders and as you begin to speak and declare it, you're going to see things happen. You're going to see the dead people that spiritually dead begin to stand up and praise him like they've never praised him before. We need to pray that the Christians get a hold of it. That they begin to get a hold of it because the Christians are full of dry bones. And I'm going to tell you, there's times when I feel like I'm a dead person, a full of dry bones, and that's when I get alone. You ask him, and I begin to praise him, and I begin to thank him, and I begin to worship my sinner on my seat. And I'm telling you, the presence of God comes like he never has ever come before. And sometimes I say, oh God, I can't take too much more of this. you got to help me. I can't take any more of this. But I'm telling you that bones that Ezekiel was talking about, they were all kinds of bones. The knees, the legs, the arms, everything else. But there wasn't no life in them. There was no meat upon them. There was no sinews upon them or whatever else. The body has to have no heart, no lungs, no nothing. But I'm telling you, America is full of dry bones. Our churches are full of dry bones. And you need to begin to speak and declare this body is going to be full of uh, not dry bones, but of spiritual speaking them that are with, that are whole, that they will be made whole, and they will not be a walking uh, cemetery or whatever else you want to say. I better get to my notes. And he caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and they were very dry. And every time I read that, I can't help it. I can't help it because God puts the burden on my heart. Just like them that's coming to the house of the Matita. And they're so hungry. They're so hungry. And I'm telling you, the people, is, the churches are not giving it to the people. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, thou knowest, and I'm speaking to rivers today. Do you know that the bones that's out here is going to live? Do you really know in your spirit, man, if them bones are going to really live? I do because I pray for this house. All the time I pray for pastors. Our pastors and our leaders, I pray for them every day. And I'm telling you, they're going to have to have their prayer. You need to get on your hands and knees and begin to pray for our leaders in this house. And to pray for the body that their bones will come together 
In that case, there's no division when them bones came together bone to bone and knee to knee, whatever else it is. And you know what? When you begin to speak to them bones, they're going to begin to come alive and you're going to see something that's going to move in this house that's never moved before. And I know that it's coming. And I know when I pray, I know that he hears me and he answers me. And you're going to begin to see as these bones came alive. I can't see with them and I can't see without them. They caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry, and he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh, Lord God, thou knowest. And I'm asking you, Rivers, do you know if them bones in this house are going to live? Is the bones in this house going to live? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Thus saith, again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And I'm going to begin to prophesy unto you right in the middle of that sentence. And I'm beginning to prophesy unto this house. We might be full of dry bones, but I'm prophesying that God will raise them bones back up. He'll begin to put the bones where they need to be, the knee to the whatever the leg, whatever, heart and everything else. And I'm prophesying that God will begin to put the bones back together and this house will become alive like it's never done before. It's going to begin to flow like the Holy Spirit wants it to begin to flow. You're going to begin to see the gifts, the signs, and the wonders and the miracles. We keep praying, oh Lord God, give it to us, give it to us. But what are you doing to get it? What are you doing? What is the price that you are willing to pay for the body of Christ and for people to be saved, healed, and set free? We're walking amongst the cities and stuff. We're walking when you go through the stores out there. You walk by people that are so dead they can't even hardly even know where they're at. I mean, we got the drugs, we got the heroin, we got the um, Sexuals, all kinds of stuff, but I'm telling you, we need people that will pray. It will take to start it at least one. At least one. And are you willing to pay the price in prayer that you can begin to call for your loved ones, my loved ones? I got a list, honey. I got two here today, but I've got a list. And I'm telling you, some of them grandbabies, I've already lost two because of it. And I'm going to tell you something. You need to begin to pray for your own house. You need to get on your hands and knees. I can't get on mine like they used to. But you can sit on that chair like I do and begin to call them out. I got me a regular rest asking. I got a page full. My family, my kids, I got this church, I got different ones in this church on that list. And I'm praying, God, these bones are going to live. This body is going to begin to live, and it's going to begin to move and have the Lord's feet. And I'm telling you, when you begin to call on the Lord God Almighty, them bones are going to begin to shake, and they're going to begin to rattle like they did in Ezekiel. And he said they were going to come bone to bone to the whatever it is, and they're going to begin to stand up. And when he gets them all healed and raised up, it's going to be a great army. And I think that's speaking of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ as we begin to stand up. Part of that body, we're part of that body, you're part of that body. And when we begin to stand up, it will start here. And when you begin to seek him like you've never sought him before, you might pray for a new car, maybe for this and maybe for that. But get down to business with him and begin to seek God that this house and every house will be a house of God. And that we can get the bones connected to the bones. And that might not be just one church, it could be different places, it could be different times. God is not calling a body out of a denomination. He's not coming, calling it out of the government. But his body is people that has accepted him as their personal Savior and Lord in their life. That is the body. You that's in, my, in here under my voice, you are part of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. There might be a church someplace else, they're part of the body of Christ. If they're serving the Lord Jesus Christ, I got Catholics coming to my house and we're, we're teaching them and praying with them. 
They're part of the body of Christ. Amen. You know what I mean? They don't know everything. They know enough that they prayed and said, Jesus, forgive me. But you know what? They're part of that body of Christ. Amen. We need to begin to love them where they're at and begin to pray for them like we've never prayed before. Amen. Amen. Oh, God, I don't even follow my notes. The church of Jesus is like bones. I already covered that. And also another thing is, remember Daniel and the lion's den? You know what? That king wanted to kill him. He didn't like any of them in there. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He didn't like any of them. But I'm going to tell you, Daniel knew his God. Do you know your God? Do you know your Lord and your Savior? Do you know that he will answer you when you call. And I'm telling you, even as Daniel knows, Reshadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was in there, you know, when that king needs to turn it up seven times, seven times hotter, and they were still in there, never smelled the smoke, nothing, and there was the Son of God in that fire with them. He looked in, and the ones that fired, he said, make it seven times hotter, and the ones that made it seven times hotter, fell over dead. And when you come into the presence of God and that enemy is coming after your house, he might be coming after your kids, he might be coming after your husband or whatever, but I'm telling you, you need to pray without ceasing. You need to begin to call on my Lord and my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, and let him begin to fill you like you've never been filled before. And I'm telling you, you're going to begin to see things that's going to happen you haven't seen. I seen him in the olden days. I seen him when I was young. And, my, and right up here on this hill was Jimmy Martin's church. That's where we started to go. The house is built there now. But that's where I started with the Holy Spirit. 14, 13, 14 years old. And I'm telling you, when you begin to see and you begin to hear him, he's going to whisper in your ear. That Holy Spirit's going to whisper to you and say, get along with me. Take the phone off the hook. You get in there and you begin to pray. Because I'm telling you, God's calling a church. He's calling his body to rise up and walk as he wants them to walk. And we don't need to put anybody else down. We need to begin to lift the Lord Jesus Christ up. And he will begin to touch you. He'll begin to lift you up. He's, he, you've got neighbors. I've got neighbors. We've all got somebody. You've got loved ones coming and going. I'm telling you, are you willing to pay the price? Are you, willing, are you really willing to pay the price? To take part of your day out. I don't care if it's only 10 minutes. If you can only stay with 10 minutes, you do 10 minutes. Whatever God has gave you, and you, you begin to walk that, and you're going to begin to see the signs and the wonders of the Holy Spirit like you've never, ever seen before. And even as he prophesied in Ezekiel 30, some chapter, he said, so I prophesied, he said, man in me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. I'm going to speak that to you today. I'm speaking that to you today. To this congregation, this group of people. And I'm telling you, the bishop and sister is gone. But I'm telling you, a lot of people stay home when he don't come. But I'm telling you, we need to get the intercessory prayer room. And for those that you know comes here and is not here today, you, you seek. You have the Holy Spirit begin to seek them out and begin to pray for them. Because they're going to need it. We all need it. We all need that anointing of the Holy Spirit and the filling of the Holy Spirit. That walk with the Lord Jesus Christ like we have not walked in years. And I'm telling you, he's called a people. He's calling every one of you. You are to be soul winners for the kingdom of God. And I'm telling you, God's going to move. If you let him move, he'll move. He'll get your hands so busy you ain't going to have time. I didn't even get all the housework done. You come to my house, you can help clean. I'm telling you, because there's times when you've got to take time out and begin to do what God wants you to do. Them dishes ain't going to float away out of that kitchen sink. And I've got it. Believe me. 
But you know what? As you begin to put him first, and if the ark needs to be moved, let it grow. Mold another day. I'm telling you whatever it is that is keeping you so busy that you can't spend time in prayer and intercessory prayer. You're too busy. You need to prioritize or how to say I don't know. Amen. Yeah. And you need to put him, the Holy Spirit, and God Almighty in Jesus' first place in your life. You need to make a list of what really, what is really in your life. What is your heart speaking to you today? And I'm going to ask every every head bow. And I want you to bow your head. And I'm asking. And I pray that you'll answer that God will give us a house full of intercessory prayer in this house. And even if you don't go here, that's okay. You can still raise your hand because you're going to another temple, another house of God. And how many is willing to spend some time alone studying tomorrow with your Lord Jesus Christ? Raise your hands if you are. That's the majority. And Lord, right now, I lift them up to you, Father. And everyone that's raised their hands, I want you to come forth, and I want the leaderships to begin to light, light up across the front. And we need to lay hands on each and every one of them and pray for them. It's early. You're not, you're not getting up late. You still got time to make your dinner. I want you to come up here, and I want the leaderships and them begin to lay hands on them and begin to pray for each and individual that comes up. If you've enjoyed this message today, find us on Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll be notified every time that we post. If you live in the area, we invite you to join us in person on Wednesday evening from 6.30 to 8 for a Word Study Bible Foundation class or next Sunday at 10 a.m for a time of family worship. We are located at 604 Holland Street in Fremont, Ohio. Our intercessory prayer warriors faithfully pray over every prayer request that is placed on our prayer cross. You may send your prayer request or a financial blessing to us at Post Office Box 1323 Fremont, Ohio. You can go to our website, rolwohio.com, if you would like to link us through PayPal. We look forward to hearing from you. Remember, there is no God like our God nowhere.